Hi there and welcome from ASCO 2017. I'm Maria Whitman. I'm the head of Oncology and Specialty Therapeutics at ZS Associates and I'm so excited to be joined today by Dr. Youssef Safar, who is the Associate Professor of Medicine and Public Policy at Duke University. Dr. Safar, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Um, you know, you are an advocate for improving patient care delivery uh, in a lot of the work you do and so we're going to talk today about real world evidence. You know, already at this conference we've heard from the FDA, from payers, from manufacturers, even from patient organizations themselves about real world evidence. So let's just start with the definition. How do you define real world evidence? So when I think about real world evidence, I think about um, collecting data from patients and from health systems in a way that is representative of the environment in which those patients were treated. You know, we usually rely on, and you look around us today, and most of what you see is data from um, randomized clinical trials. Yes. Um, and randomized clinical trials are so important. Um, and, and I still believe are there, they are the gold standard um, in terms of the data that um, we collect and make decisions on uh, today. Um, but they don't necessarily represent the patients that I treat in clinic every day. Wow. And I think about the patients on randomized clinical trials um, for pancreas cancer, yes. a disease um, uh, that I treat, and you know the patients on the trials are younger, they're healthier, they are they have fewer comor comorbid illnesses yeah. um, than patients that um, get enrolled on clinical trials. So it's important to have that um, to understand the distinction, and understand the value of both um, sources and sets of data. When we think about um, real-world evidence versus or in complement to randomized clinical trials. Uh, the FDA was even speaking yesterday about the fact that we need to find ways to use both. Um, and you did mention yourself collecting that data real time with patients and institutions. So what's the right balance that you see moving forward? You know, I think the reason that we still think of clinical trials, randomized trials as the gold standard, mm -hmm. is because by randomization, you eliminate um, or re reduce as much as possible the impact of chance on the finding, right? So if you randomize a group of patients, um, you're less likely to have uh, a chance effect impact the overall outcomes. I think some of the concerns that people have with real world evidence is in um, the, the concern for hidden biases that we may not be able to detect in the data that get um, sort of sorted out in the wash um, when it comes to a randomized clinical trial. But there are certainly obstacles that real world data will need to overcome in order to be um, seen in the same light or better than in a randomized clinical trial, for example. Um, and I think part of that has to do with um, the quality of the data. So as, as we collect more data from more patients, um, in many cases, we start missing data points. And we um, don't com get collect complete data from all of our patients, or we don't collect enough data. So we don't collect all of the data points that are important to patients in terms of their quality of life or particular symptoms they're having, or maybe we're not looking at the right outcomes. So what we need to make sure is as we sort of move along in this field of real world data collection that we're um, collecting uh, sufficient data um, and that we make sure that, that it's high quality. Uh, because the minute that we start um, dropping um, the, in terms of the quality of the data, um, the reliability of it um, really comes into question. Yeah. As we get to a point where randomized clinical trials are more expensive, and in some cases patient populations are smaller and smaller, does real world evidence become an option for first approval, or is it something that we really should still be looking at for subsequent approval and validation? So that's a really important point, and I think it gets to where we are today in um, the quality of the real world data that we're generating. Yeah. You know, in certain, in certain instances, we've got very high quality data yes. um, that becomes very important as we take tumor types and slice them into, <laughs> you know, paper, paper fine slices yeah. um, based on um, molecular diagnostics, right, and um, tumor profiling. Um, again, however, I think we have a lot more work to do in terms of the quality of that data. Um, there are organizations nationally that are uh, making great strides in um, collecting that data, again, at a national level. Um, but we have a long way to go.